Hello, I'm Carl Katz, the Executive Director of News, Film, and Television. You're about to watch A Window to Heaven, a short film by Adrian Maben, the filmmaker, and art expert Robin Cormack, made for the production lab, a joint venture of the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the J. Paul Getty Trust. This film explores the relationship between words and images of contemporary media and the cryptic vestiges of the hermit monk Neophytus on the walls of his cave. His cave is found above the small city of Paphos in Cyprus. The 12th century was considered a period of intense artistic creativity in Byzantium. Neophytus's cave paintings and writings are some of the best preserved artifacts from that time. They vividly embodied his aspiration to sainthood through spiritual living. The walls of his cave dwelling, painted in 1183, illustrate how religious art was an effective and persuasive tool for defining the hopes and values of medieval Christian society. Today it's no different. Contemporary commercials are constantly attempting to instill ways to promote a lifestyle. Through dramatic editing and narrative approach, Maben brings you into the process of questioning and discovery. This documentary shows how film has become another effective tool to look at art. Images today often mean more than they at first sight claim to mean. In this Greek TV commercial, our eyes, not ears, pick up the implied message, if you buy the car, then you also get the girl. Are such visual messages linked to the invention of film and the mass media of the 20th century, or did the paintings of the past also manipulate the viewer's response? One answer can be found if we move back in time to the Middle Ages. By the 12th century, a large number of small, deceptively simple Christian churches and monasteries had sprouted like colored mushrooms on the island of Cyprus. This was the medieval civilization of Byzantium. In this world, both deeply realistic and deeply religious, fact and desire could blend. The time was ripe to believe in the birth of a special saint. Neophytus of Cyprus, born 1134, lived over 55 years in his cave monastery near Paphos, died 1215, hermit, monk, priest, and saint.
It was at this table, seated on this ledge, which served as both chair and bed, that the Byzantine hermit wrote, according to his own boast, some 16 volumes, manuscripts later to be sold and preserved in major libraries of the world. From the walls of his minute cell, Neophytus was watched over by the painted figures of Christ, Mary, St. John, and other favorite saints. This is the last will of me, Neophytus, worthless priest and monk of the Inclistra, the Hermitage, written on the 9th of May, 1214, when I was 80. Let me tell of my life. When I was 18 and seven months betrothed, I escaped from my village home and entered the monastery of Chrysostomus. But after several months searching, my parents found me and forced me back, though I refused marriage. Finally, they let me return to the monastery and be tonsured. No wedding clothes ever pleased a bridegroom so much as my monk's cloak pleased me. But after two years, I went to the Holy Land because I pined to live there in the company of some solitary hermit. I found no one to accept me. Upon my return to Cyprus, I went to Paphos to find a boat to take me to another holy place. Here, I was seized by the harbour guards, thrown into prison and robbed by them of all my savings. When they let me go, I came inland to the place of this Inclistra, this precipice and smallest of caves, which was deserted and a resting place for birds. It was June 1159. After a trial period of two months, I decided the place was indeed quiet and solitary, and I began to excavate and enlarge the cave. I worked for a year until the 14th of September, 1160, the day of the festival of the Holy Cross. I also cut out a tomb deep inside the cave, telling myself, this will be your only permanent possession, even if you come to rule the whole world. I called the cave the Church of the Holy Cross and made an altar so that I would always be near the Holy Communion of the Body and Blood of Christ. The Bishop of Paphos made me become a priest and accept disciples. Thereafter, the entire cliff was cut out into cave cells and in the 24th year of my enclosure in 1183, the Inclistra was painted throughout and consecrated.
if God wills it, when God produces a rich or imperial sponsor, another church shall be built. Until then, be satisfied with the rock cut in Kistra. <laughs> In 1997, wanting to escape the attentions of my many visitors, I dug out in the ceiling over the cave church a holy room for my presence at the services below. Above this was my new cell to be called New Sion. In the Inclistra, the 12th century paintings gave Neophytus and his monks a permanent company of Christian narrative scenes. They formed an interconnecting visual statement and were a source of spiritual guidance, offering, after a life of suffering, the possibility of the peace of heaven. The moralizing scrolls of the revered saints on the walls taught the living monks the living dead, as they were called, how best to prepare for life after death. St. Stephen, if anyone does not reverence our Lord Jesus Christ and his pure mother depicted on an icon, let them be anathema. St. Amun, brethren and fathers, Refrain from immoderate eating and untimely drinking. Frequent the church and pray constantly. St. Theodore. He who has the fear of God in his heart has no need of many books, for the fear of God is sufficient for him. St. Pacomius. This is the royal road that the fathers have laid down, to eat but once a day. St. Ephraim, the beginning of a monk's ruin are laughter and an uncontrolled tongue.
For a medieval monk, or ourselves today, the visual signs speak more strongly than words. The paintings on the vaulted walls of the hermits in Clistra effectively transformed his unwritten desire for future sainthood into an assured fact during his lifetime. On the picture of Neophytus above the table in his cell, we read, Christ, through the prayers of your mother and your Baptist, who stand in reverence by your holy throne, be merciful to him who lies as a suppliant at your feet. We can read the words simply as a stated prayer. But in the painting, we see the hand of Christ already blessing Neophytus. The image is no longer just a prayer, it is the prayer answered. In the vault above the altar, we come face to face with Neophytus and a text with a play on words. It says, I pray to these two angels that this image should come true. It also says, I pray to join the community of these two angels because of my monastic cloak. The writing voices a request for future heavenly favor. The image seals it. Neophytus is being escorted to heaven just as Christ ascends to heaven on the wall opposite him. In the picture of the resurrection of the dead by Christ, the witness, St. John the Baptist, holds a scroll with the written message. See the one of whom I have said, he comes to free you from the bonds of hell. Christ frees Adam, but is this the face of Adam or of Neophytus? The paintings of Christ's life spiraled round the twisted walls of the cave church and ended with his ascension in the dome. This second ascension, now damaged, framed the dark window of the hermit's upper cell. Look up, and in the 12th century, you saw no written prayer, but the face of Neophytus looking down through the window. Neophytus the man has become icon, saint, apostle, even the ascending Christ himself. I pray that I am found worthy at the hour of death to be called before God. For all must die, but not all are called to ascend towards God. If I am found worthy, do not weep, but pray and glorify God, and bury my humble corpse in the tomb which I have made in the wall of my first cell. Not long after he wrote his will, in 1214, Neophytus died and was buried in his enclistra. Neither the words in his books nor the words on the walls of his cave ever claimed he was a saint, but the face of sainthood is there for all to see. After his death, the Orthodox cave monastery flourished and expanded. New icons were painted and, as predicted by the hermit, a larger church was put up and decorated art built upon art.